Uh, can you hear me? Uh, welcome to Dr. Tintin Futun's keynote. I'm Yasuhiro Igarashi from Yaman College of Aesthetics in Japan. I'm one of the co-organizers of this conference. I will moderate this session with Dr. Irene Strasser from American University in Cairo. It's my great honor to introduce Dr. Tintin Futun. Dr. Futun comes from Myanmar. She graduated from Tsukuba University in Japan with, with a major in social psychology. Now she bases at the Chuo University in Tokyo. Tintin has been doing research on minority and gender issues in Japan for a long time and published important papers on these issues. She knows well about Japanese psychology and its background from the perspective of non-Japanese. And she knows well Western psychology through Japanese psychology as Japanese psychology was wholly Americanized after World War II. The title of her keynote is Multiple Inequalities and Global Crisis. So please join the virtual welcome, Dr. Tintin Futun. Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about the multiple inequalities and uh, COVID-19 as a global crisis. And uh, uh, since I'm not a, a researcher who focuses on crisis, and, uh, but I've been teaching uh, about gender inequalities and social inequalities in Japan for a long time. So, and uh, I'll be using existing data. Some of them are the data are from the government uh, data. Some are from the researchers done in Japan by Japanese researchers to show that these uh, existing inequalities uh, could, uh, uh, that the existing inequalities uh, can create a different impact in, in the context of the COVID-19. And uh, some researchers also mentioned that uh, COVID-19 will be very different from other crises. And, and it is uh, the impact will be uh, varied from, for, for multiple groups. So uh, let's start uh, looking at the uh, multiple inequalities in Japan. First, I would like to uh, explain uh, a little bit about the conceptual framework. It's nothing new, it's the social inequalities and I'm going to explain social inequalities from the uh, intersectionality or using employing uh, intersectionality framework. So uh, every society has uh, in different forms of inequalities. Japan is not free from that either. But in Japan, we tend to focus a lot on the gender uh, inequality and the other inequalities like ethnic inequalities and also some inequality, inequalities like uh, experienced by people with disability and, and uh, people uh, who have different sexual orientations are not really uh, much part of the mainstream research as well. So there is a reason for it. And uh, this is also a dominant ideology of Japan being homogeneous in one ethnic country, kind of blinded the researchers or, or, or silenced some voices of researchers to Ex, uh, to explain or use frameworks that could show the intersections of gender, ethnicity, and other forms of, of uh, inequalities. So as uh, uh, I mentioned before, I would like to start with social inequalities. And the social inequalities are, are basically differences that is constructed and these uh, constructions are also constructed through the historical process and they're justified by the ideologies of superiority, inferiority, and, and also uh, 
This is mostly expressed in resource inequality of resources, why certain groups of people or certain people who belong to certain categories are considered as a higher status and they have more resources and opportunities, whereas the others don't have this kind of, of, of opportunities or resources. So these uh, uh, inequalities are reproduced through the social structures and also supported by the ideologies, uh, practice or adopted in this society. And uh, basically so, so, uh, social inequalities are the hierarchical difference between groups of peoples and uh, hierarchical distribution of social, political, economic and cultural resources. They are uh, uh, kind of, these resources are distributed differently to different groups of people, groups mean the people who belong to different categories, for example, gender, race, ethnicity, class, sexual uh, people, LGBT, the disability, groups of disability, religion, all these uh, groups uh, have uh, different positions in the, the society. And uh, based on the, where they belong in or which group they belong, which categories they belong, they can experience uh, uh, multiple forms of inequalities. And this is also in part of the everyday practices and also part of the institutions as well. So when we talk about inequalities, uh, usually they uh, especially next part when we come into intersectionality framework, that's uh, usually the classic intersection uh, categories we look at is gender, race, ethnicity, class. But there are uh, multiple forms of inequalities in different societies. Uh, so uh, some societies could highlight more, some societies uh, are not that keen on highlighting these uh, uh, categories. So COVID-19, also uh, a lot of people uh, in the media also research that the, they bring in or exacerbate multiple forms of inequal existing inequalities in global, uh, in, the, uh, what, in the societies in many different countries. So uh, this is a quote from FAO. Yeah? So, and, in this international organization. So inequality of wealth is linked to inequality in opportunity, political power, uh, access to and outcomes in human capital, health, education. So the basically this uh, FAO document is saying that there will be different impact in different countries and between the developed countries and developing countries. So in that way, um, we, uh, it is, uh, we are looking at the much more uh, apparent form of inequalities in society that we may not notice before now is much more salient in the society. So which groups have, have, will experience more of this? Yeah? So I would like to share a video first. So uh, about uh, that's also produced by the uh, international agency. So let me stop this.
so as uh, in, in, let me just quickly um, interrupt you. I'm so sorry. Uh, maybe you can exit the presenter mode and have the slides larger for us. Do you think oh, that okay. will work? Sorry. Because what yeah. Zoom now does is it takes it in the presenter mode. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Is that okay now? Wonderful, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. So, uh, uh, going back to the multiple forms of inequalities, as you shown, uh, as you see in the video, it is also the gender is very much uh, is highlighted in the uh, one form of major inequalities. As we all know that there are other forms of inequalities, like in the same FAO document is mentioned, indigenous people, low caste group, ethnic minorities and refugees are also, these are, are marginalized groups in society, and they also are vulnerable to the, the, uh, the impact of COVID-19. So these groups are, are as, uh, you all know that they are not separately existing groups. So there are women in the indigenous groups and low caste groups, ethnic minorities, women are also part of it. We are also, we belong to multiple categories. And so the uh, impact of COVID-19 could be also multiple forms of inequalities. Um, as uh, the, the recent, uh, news report on Guardian, like we see the pain of uh, the Black, Asian and minority ethnic group, they, uh, they have a higher tendency to be infected by COVID-19. And here you can see uh, uh, both uh, data, the both men and women, more or less uh, uh, the same kind of, of uh, uh, the, the risk is the same. But uh, the, the highlight is, uh, is both for men is, uh, it's a it's higher uh, level of infection. They have they tend to have higher risks than women, but this also the we need to understand more about all these intersection of gender and also the uh, the ethnicity and other uh, forms of of, uh, cat, the, of um, inequalities experienced by all these groups. So this is not gender and ethnicity are the only dimension that can be, uh, that, that could have the, the inequalities of these intersection can be impacted by COVID-19 itself. There are a lot of other categories as well. So I would like to borrow uh, intersectionality framework. I'm not sure you, uh, that you're familiar with this, but what I would like to highlight here is that these categories are intersecting categories, gender, class, uh, the uh, ethnicity, religions, sexual orientation, ability, disability, all these are, are, are intersecting ca categories. And, uh, and these are also, uh, in a way, uh, the, the way in the, these categories intersect is, is could be uh, different for the people, the pe people who belong in those groups. So, intersectionality is trying to understand how these intersections and uh, are also and intersections intersections and these uh, systems or operations or, and domination. Uh, create particular forms of, of inequalities for, for, for people, the, depending on the location of individuals from these groups. So 
is basically examine the matrix of social categories and how, since I mentioned in the first slide, is hierarchical, uh, the social uh, inequalities are hierarchical in nature. So how these hierarchical uh, structures and relationships are maintained through in everyday life in the society by structures and policy. So I would like to bring this into the context of Japan. So uh, this is a research done by economists in, Jap in Japan. And they, it's the first kind of research that emerged, but they haven't really examined the impact yet, but they are predicting the impact of COVID-19. And what, what is here is the, that they don't, they didn't call it intersectionality, but they said this, that this kind of uh, impact could be, uh, would be, be very uh, because uh, of different groups of people as a heterogeneous uh, genius of vulnerability. So this, this could, uh, di different groups may have a different impact of COVID-19. Yeah? So uh, that's in, their study, they focus on gender, age, and education. So, uh, and they predicted that this crisis would, could hit harder to low-income groups, and was that could uh, worsen the income inequality. So, why is that? Because there's a already structure. The labor market are, are producing structural inequality because the way the labor market is structured is uh, it's divided workers into regular workers, and um, according to them, they call it contingent workers. But I I use irregular workers. These are part-time workers, dispatch workers, and temp workers, temporary workers. So. Who belong to which group is, is you will see it in next. Uh, before that, I will also ex want to explain what I mean by gender, because uh, gender in here, I would like to quote children of uh, the definition. Genders are, are, they are social status and uh, is constructed in different history, uh, in case of Japan and in many other countries as well. Gender is constructed in different histor historical period, different political, social, economic contexts differently to make these differences uh, in terms of nation building or, or for, for the economic development. You will see this in Japan as well. So gender is, also, uh, is a social status, a social category. So N is also, also the uh, integral parts of social orders, as uh, it has a do there's a domination, subordination, like any other hierarchical uh, kind of relationship. Uh, the, uh, but this is a, but it also depends on the context. So when we're talking about dominance and uh, uh, subordination, it also is we have to look into the context whether. Uh, in the uh, public domain or in family or, or in political context. So all these things, uh, what is uh, what I want to say gender or define gender in when we look at the impact of COVID-19 is a, a so social category and is social status. It is shaped by structure uh, and institutional um, of the, the structures and institutions of Japanese society. And, and of course, uh, the laws and organizations are part of it. So globally, where does Japan stand in terms of gender equality? It's not very high. Yeah? So this is the World Economic Forum uh, report is published since 2006. And they measure for, they have four indicators that uh, show that the uh, gender gap or whether the country, each countries have achieved uh, gender equality or closed the gender gap. So depending on these four indicators, one is educational attainment and uh, uh, the, the second one is labor force participation. And this is pro 
the number of men and women working in the workforce, and uh, uh, third one, in health and survival. There's uh, sub indicators on life expectations and uh, sex ratio at birth, and also political empowerment, meaning that women's uh, political uh, participation and representation in this particular country. So where does Japan fall? So uh, in the East Asian Pacific, uh, they are trending out of 20 countries. Japan is, uh, is 19, uh, sorry, 18. Yeah? So globally, out of 153 countries, Japan is 121. And is it uh, quite a drop from last year ranking? And so, and uh, but the, if you look at that, uh, this is uh, other countries like much uh, less developed countries, uh, economically less developed countries like Philippines, Laos, uh, Thailand. They are, are at the higher ranking level. So what? Why does Japan ranking so low? So if we, uh, this is a general score of, of the uh, gender gap score in, for Japan. And as we see that these indicators, Japan is close, uh, closer uh, to, to average for in, uh, education and health. But what is problem here is, is politics, political empowerment and the labor force participation, because uh, that's, uh, Usually, is uh, these are, are two indicators that difficult to achieve, and also difficult to get higher score. Politics is not not Japan is not the unique in that sense. Many countries in the world fall into this uh, this kind of low ranking, except for uh, for the Nordic countries. So. Uh, if we look at Japan educational attainment, this is what the um, global gender gap said. Japan has lit literacy rate is, is uh, in terms of literacy rate, men and women are equal. And uh, the, here they didn't mention, uh, they didn't get the data of the enrollment rate, but at the same time proportion enrollment in primary education level is the same for men and women. The, what makes the difference is, is the secondary education and tertiary level education. So uh, I, this is uh, the, the data collected by the um, cabinet office in Japan. As you may see that Japan, uh, women in Japan, uh, their education uh, level is catching up with men quite quickly. And as for these two top lines, like uh, this uh, yellow, uh, this upper secondary school uh, for, for women, and the green line is upper secondary school for men. Yeah? So they both uh, are, for them, is the same. But here, what is, um, is the university level education? Uh, it is here the same for, oh, sorry, it's a man is slightly higher. But if you look at over the years, starting from 1955 to 2019, women start, uh, when they are uh, after the war, uh, it is much more women uh, education is uh, going into more like junior colleges. The, these colleges are two years colleges where women are, uh, it's intended for women. They, they have some education and they, they work for some time and they marry. But these colleges are also a bit of despairing and, and uh, more and more women are going to a four year university uh, education and they're catching up with men. The, the, and another issue I would like to mention is also as mentioned in the uh, uh, before that uh, this uh, gender gap is created also by a uh, very uh, small representation of women in politics. So if we look at women in parliament, Japan is 10%. There's, uh, that is also quite low. Uh, compared to uh, other countries, uh, um, I've, around 20, 20, uh, 12 to 23, 24 percent is average women's uh, uh, political participation. But 
Japan as a developed industrialized country, it is uh, quite low. Yeah. And then uh, women in decision-making position, like ministerial positions and head of states it is also, uh, Japan still hasn't had a prime minister, women prime minister so far. And also ministerial position numbers are extremely low if compared to men. Yeah, so 5.3% to 94.7%. So now I will highlight the, the, the uh, economic participation, especially uh, because this area will be most impacted by COVID-19 as well. So, Labor force participation rate Japan is, if we look at the 60 female labor force participation rate is 69.8%. That is quite high. Uh, it's higher than the United States, slightly higher than the United States and, and higher than average of OECD countries. But the problem here is where, does, where do women work and what kind of wages they earn? Because if we look at this, there's apparently there's a, Wage inequality, inequality exists. Yeah? So according to this, uh, uh, here is the uh, the ranking is 67. So the, it's between 60, the 30 percent to 40 percent wage gap exists, and um, also uh, the uh, women in decision making positions, like managerial positions, and also high level. Position senior officials, the legislators, they are uh, less than 15%. Uh, and then also professional workers, a number of women are there is quite high, but at the same time, is uh, not uh, equal to men yet. So that could create a wage, uh, not surprisingly, it, it can create a, a wage gap itself. So I would like to show you where. I'm sorry. Where the uh, the women work? Yeah. So according to this is uh, uh, the um, type of employment uh, for men and women. If we look at this, this blue is a regular worker. That's also I mentioned it before. And this uh, orange and the part and green part is the part time workers and uh, other the ir irregular contingent workers. Yeah. So this graphs to show the data started from, from 1985 to 2016. Yeah. If we look at that, 1985 is the year Japan enacted the Equal Employment Opportunity Law. Yeah. And then after the, this year, uh, the, the enactment of the Equal Employment Opportunity Law, you will see the decrease in women regular workers and increase in part-time workers and women uh, are the, in, uh, in a nutshell, women, number of women workers in the irregular uh, uh, jobs are increasing. And whereas uh, regular jobs, regular uh, jobs are, or regular positions or full-time positions are decreasing. So there's definitely structural institutional issues do exist. Uh, in Japan and uh, in terms of, of uh, employment. Uh, so we would like to look a bit more in detail. And this is uh, the data from on the Kikuchi and Mikoshiba. Show. So I cite their data is quite similar to the first one, but here they show the ages. Yeah? So if we look at that, you can see gender and age inter intersection of inequality, so the, the, the graph on the, um, on the left is for men and uh, is for here is uh, this graph on the right is for women. Yeah, if we look at that, this is regular, uh, is blue one and contingent workers is the irregular and the self-employed. Yeah? So uh, if we look at men, men constantly have this inverted U shape. So this is a normal type of employment. But here in women, as they grow older, they, and also their number, uh, the, the number of women in the contingent worker sections uh, is uh, the, uh, the category increased. 
So that means that contingent workers don't have a, a protection and social security and benefits. So if the women who working in the, even in the winter, the women workers, the, the type of employment they have already created inequality within the, uh, between, within the women as well as between men and women. So uh, that's one form of inequality we can see. Next one is, is the wage gap. Yeah. So wage gap is, uh, um, if, if uh, we look at, there's also wage gap exists between regular workers and irregular workers. Yeah? So, and also between near regular workers and women uh, uh, regular workers. So if a woman or a man regular workers earn 100 yen, a uh, women worker earn 73 yen. So there's a wage gap for, for these uh, 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 the part-time uh, workers and, and they, they are earning uh, 58% of the what regular workers and um, even within the pattern it didn't show in the uh, in this graph but uh, in some other sources said that uh, there's a uh, men irregular workers or part-time workers usually work in constructions and also uh, technology those uh, types of sectors and industries women works in service sector and restaurants and supermarkets. And also they have within a, the part-time the part workers, they also have wage gap. So we can already see that who is going to have uh, experience the impact of COVID-19 more yeah? and within these workers as well. Next one is also uh, gender and type of occupation and income. This is, uh, uh, when now is we all encouraged to work from home and social distancing, but in Japan, that's not possible for some workers or some types of businesses. A lot of Japanese businesses, are, they have to do face to face. And also women are working in those kind of what they call social. Uh, these face-to-face, -face, uh, face-to-face social is usually is uh, the type of work is uh, a service giving. It could be from the technological service, educational service uh, and entertainment, uh, amusement, eating, drinking, all these different forms of services. So women are, if we look at that, this is uh, the higher number of women are in debt compared to men. And there's also flexibility is that this you can you don't have to go to the regular workplace to work. You can take work your uh, uh, you can do work from home or anywhere else. Non-flex is something you have to be at the commute to go there and be uh, physically present there. Ordinary is the the uh, is a basic type of industries like like. Uh, agriculture, fishery, forestry, um, uh, all these communication, transportation, all, all these industries. And these industries are naturally, uh, naturally means that it's, us it's uh, usually dominated by men and uh, male, uh, male workers are there. And these are, are also higher earning uh, work. And even within the, the, the male uh, who work in ordinary sector and social sectors have a, diff, a slight different in earning. For women, even if they work in the same sector compared to men, their salaries are, are lower. Yeah? The same goes for, for the non-flex job, face-to-face -face job, women uh, salary. This is annual uh, salary, so it's 1.6 million. Whereas for, if we look at men, uh, social sector is 3.8 so uh, million yen. So these are, are if within the same occupation, there's also wage inequality exists uh, uh, across the occupation, also depending on the type of occupations, uh, they, uh, there's also wage inequality do exist. And this is uh, the, the graph that is showed by, age. So as women aging, uh, is, if we look at this graph, 
as women uh, age and the way that they work is non, uh, they are working more and more in non-flex social work. So, and with in Japan also, if you are a single elderly woman and you need to work and uh, because there's an, uh, later I will also explain the way the Japanese social welfare system is, make it uh, difficult for women to have a kind of compensation because they are uh, des designated to, to support their family and they uh, support their husbands and raise children uh, through the company's policies and government welfare policies. So if the, these women become uh, divorced or become if they stay single all through their life, it is very difficult for them to, to uh, have a standard life and standard income uh, in, uh, compared to male counterparts. So that's, uh, I would like to quote this, uh, these researchers uh, uh, saying about this COVID-19. So COVID-19 crisis could affect gender inequality in a way that is uniquely different from regular recessions, which interact with adoptions of flexible work arrangement, intra-household relocation of labor in and outside of one's home, and the larger effects on industry with high female employment shares. So the uh, gender inequality, the, the forms of gender inequality within the household, within the family, and within the, the, uh, the jobs, the sector they were employed uh, and different uh, kind of industry they work for. And how it is, these industries are also affected differently by COVID-19. And these effects will be heavier on, on the women who are working. And even within the women, it's also, uh, there could be different groups of women could have different experience. Like I mentioned, the age is one factor. And why is this? Well, because we need to look at why women could have, uh, are experiencing more inequalities. It's, it's, uh, we need to look at the Equal Employment Opportunity Law in Japan. And this law is enacted out of necessity because Japan's uh, become, uh, Japan ratified CEDAW in 1985. So it needs to have a, have a, a legal framework that, uh, it, that protect the, the women workers. So uh, the, what is interesting about this law is this law can encourage employers to make an effort to give equal treatment to women and men. This law does, didn't have a punishment or penalty for not complying the law. So employers can get away with not, uh, not uh, conforming to the law. And there's also a lot of discretions given within the law for employers. So, uh, and also this law was enacted to increase the number of women workers. So. So they they still to increase the, the number of women workers. They do uh, still maintain these gender segregated practices, like women are hired for lower level position or secretary or office workers, and and all these uh, kind of practices and of hiring and uh, prom uh, promotion uh, criteria are the same. So. Um, and another thing is before the en enactment of the law, labor standard law in Japan currently or protected women workers from certain kind of work. They don't need to do long work. They didn't need to do long work hours or they didn't need to do overtimes because understanding is that they have family responsibilities. Now the, what is equal employment opportunity law is uh, what consider equality is is that um, uh, equality means the same for men and women. So men and women should work the same hours. So, but there are also the intention of the eliminating the the, uh, the, the work hour restrictions is 
It's also to reduce the, the long work hours for men and men could go home and also spend time with family and uh, take care of family. But these didn't happen. It is that uh, they actually, it kind of women, it become a criteria for women that they have to work the same hours as men. So uh, this, the, the enactment of an equal employment opportunity at the first stage in the, in the 1985 is the understanding is men workers are co-workers and they are the, the criteria for work and women have to follow this uh, criteria. And, and the employment, employers also have different responses to these, uh, these equal employment law. And uh, one is that they respond by two track system. One is career track and general track. Career track in a sense that is for, for people who would go up in the ladder and get promotion and get to the managerial high level position. General track is basically office track or clerical track so you do office work like copying and also uh, all these other stuff that, that doesn't need to be graded or that doesn't need to be evaluated. So this is nine to five jobs. So a lot of women go into general track because they have responsibilities for home. And career track is, uh, is usually men go, go uh, majority of men go for that. Of course, you, you can change the track uh, uh, for, but no men cook. I haven't heard about men coming into general track, or, but there are a few women who go or change to career track, but they have tougher criteria and also um, criteria uh, for the for promotion and going uh, to these career tracks a lot of challenges. And some of the women I did research with said that they hit the ceiling, a glass ceiling at one point. So uh, if they were not treated the same as men, even in they are in the career track. And yet, so uh, this equal employment opportunity law, these career uh, is all these years after that is could increase a, num a small number of women managers. Now uh, there are 15% of women in managerial position, but that's uh, compared to 35, 40% in, in other uh, countries that is not, uh, is not a high number. So that's also, also a problem for women concentrating in the lower level job positions and, and uh, part-time positions. Another one is Japanese style management. So, Japanese uh, style management is from the after the war up to to now is still practicing breadwinner uh, uh, model. Uh, that means a male uh, in a family, man is considered as the breadwinner and co-worker, and women do part-time jobs. And that the companies are, are they uh, have the policies that. Uh, give security to male workers. They train the workers from the entry and give promotion as, uh, as they stay longer in the employment and it's, ca it's called lifetime employment. And these lifetime, if you, is, is, uh, this kind of policy uh, could also increase the trust and relationship between the worker and the, the em employer and the identifying more with the, the uh, the employer and the companies and so, and so it's kind of encourage also uh, trust and also the relationship based uh, uh, work work rela relationship based uh, working style and also inside the oriented decision making so families got a lot of benefit by social benefits like like uh, if a woman doesn't work uh, a wife does doesn't work, uh, the husband could get tax cut and the wife could be enrolled in the husband's and social health insurance and pension. So that, uh, and in, uh, in turn, what it's doing is uh, these companies could save the, uh, save the state burden for 
for welfare costs for the families and the workers. So that's the agreement between the uh, the, co the corporations and the government in that sense. So who is going to provide the care uh, or welfare is, is the, the one who stay at home is usually women. So uh, this is a Japanese time management reward uh, men workers with longer years without interruption. This kind of lifetime employment system, it, you have a record of, in, uh, of uh, long uh, working years without interruption is as a standard is not good for women because in Japan, 70% of women drop out of workforce after they have children. So it's still, uh, it's slightly less now, but still there are a lot of women uh, still dropping out of workforce. So that kind of reinforces also women are and uh, not capable to stay longer at the workplace. They will, uh, they will leave the workplace at some point, so they're not to be trusted. They, they not, uh, so it is negative by women and by already by being a woman uh, in hiring and promotions. And also there are the gender viruses like right, they have a harder promotional tell the exams and, and the criteria compared to men. So women have to prove a lot to, uh, to be, they are to be trusted and they have capability. And the Japanese style welfare system, as my, I mentioned before, this is uh, also, um, I have to finish soon. <laughs> and this kind of social welfare system is the companies took the responsibility of welfare for the workers' families, so government spend less, but uh, there's a, a national medical insurance system, healthcare system, and national pension system. So if a woman d d doesn't work, she could be enrolled under, under social health healthcare system of the, her husband's uh, employers, and also she was giving pension system, uh, so she could get a pension uh, from the her husband employers as well. And so these prefer preferential treatments are usually encouraging women not to uh, not to work or also work in the lower wages because there's an income ceiling for that as well. So women are, uh, this, in this way of organization of the society and the policies, family policies, health and social welfare policies, doesn't as, uh, they, they're not encouraging women to seek for higher level places. Even they seek for higher level places, they have other barriers. And so uh, the, it's uh, another, the, the structural changes that are impact on the, the number of women workers is a deregulation. And that's after the economic recession. So a lot of these, the cost cutting and structural changes uh, made it, uh, the workforce is, uh, uh, they are reducing a lot of workers and replace the, the regular workers with non-regular workers or dispatch workers. And 62% of dis dispatch workers are usually uh, women. Even more men are working in dispatch work or uh, contract work, but still they are in more skilled sectors. So women are in the clerical or say works that are, are essential but low paid. So this has impact on certain groups of, of women. So not women is not unified group. So these policies have could uh, have a, a different impact on the different groups of women, especially women who are single mothers. Which in Japan, there are 1.24 million single uh, mother household. And these women are usually in poverty because, because they, their earning is, uh, is much less than single uh, father household uh, in that sense, because usually they're not employed in, if you look at the full-time jobs, single fathers have more full, high number of full-time jobs. Single mothers usually are part-time jobs or, or, or temp jobs, and they have to 
to make ends meet, they have to do uh, two, at least two shifts, but even this is not necessary. So Japan has also higher number of child poverty. So these families are going to have a lot of impact in that sense uh, of COVID-19 because the, the type of jobs they work and the, the group they belong to. And another thing is uh, organizational culture and practices. And this is also uh, in, in Japanese uh, workplaces, there's a vertical segregation within that means that, as I mentioned before, if you have two track systems, even if you don't have two track systems, women are usually hired for clerical, lower level management positions. So that is part of the gender inequality. And if a male, be uh, the workplace become male dominated workplace, then this will be also uh, that uh, male bonding becomes stronger and the practices of, of, of the taking clients to host a spa and entertaining hostess and objectifying women uh, also become, uh, that leads to sexual harassment uh, at workplaces are quite common in Japan. So uh, I'm going to show you aging population quickly is if you look at the aging population in Japan, uh, it is women are higher number in over 65 and over 75 group. They live longer. Uh, and so not surprisingly, they also given the, the structural the, the, and institutional factors in the employment uh, and the workforce. So uh, the, the poverty rate for women is much higher. So 14% of the it also depends on in, uh, the married status. If, if you are with uh, married or you have a spouse, those women are in better position than women who are unmarried elderly women or widows in the poverty, so widows or divorced women. So this group of elderly women, single mother women, if we look at the, 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 uh, the people COVID-19 data, these groups will be hit harder than others. And gender inequality in, and how gender and ethnicity intersects is also part of the problem again. So I, I'm going to show very quickly now, I think I'm overtaking the time. So, Japan has ethnic groups, but at the same time, these are, uh, are not visible and not that much known. Like for example, Ainu's indigenous group and uh, Buraku is, uh, is a former, the, the community where some of the former Afghan group lives, but now it's other uh, working poor or single mothers live there, but people who live in that kind of community are considered as related to outcasts and discriminated. Another one is the colonial legacy, is the Koreans in Japan who are brought into Japan uh, for the colonization. And uh, also these minority groups has also long history of, of experience of discrimination. And there's years of, centuries of discrimination could show in, in terms of, of the, uh, the impact of, on their education level, employment opportunity, and depending on welfare, and also social discrimination like marriage as well. So um, this is also brought into because uh, the Jew, during the uh, before war, Japan has these different ethnic groups. But it is kind of of, of a very uh, rigorous uh, assimilation, make them assimilated, and it's becoming one. But uh, they were all these groups were denied their cultural and language rights and treated as second class citizens. After the war, Japan constructed itself as a mono ethnic because it returned its colonies, and it's then that's where, um, and. Uh, the the ethnic is is not associated with Japanese ethnic becoming ethnicity is something outside of Japan and Japanese uh, are called themselves as the Japanese so this one is uh, mono is much more emphasized than ethnic so the image of Japan as a uh, uh, that's one one uh, one language one culture is so strong 
among every ordinary people as well as some people, some image from the outside as well. But this has impact on especially women in the ethnic groups. Japan never collected the data based on ethnicity or different uh, uh, groups. Yeah? So, but this is the, the women who uh, try uh, to collect their own data these from, for, for, to show their reality. As you see that there's very few number of women go to university. Yeah? And we can compare all these groups, but each group, if we look at that, the, the situation is, is, is uh, very much uh, dire compared to the average uh, of the nationality, Japanese nationality. Employment also, they have a lot of, uh, they work, whereas Japanese women don't, uh, the, the employment participation is 40%. That means that this is necessary for them to work, to survive. And family type, there's also a very high number of single mothers in this group, in these groups, all these three groups. So that also indicates that well, when we talk about single mothers and elderly women, these all two, three groups have all these uh, elder, single mothers, high number of single mothers, elderly women. So these gender and ethnicity intersection in these groups will be hit harder by the COVID as well. Yeah? So I'm uh, going to uh, show you very quickly and then conclusion. <clears throat> And this, uh, this is a separate survey by Buraku Group, and they focus on women. And when we look at the women, it's also reflect the first survey. The first survey was done in 2005. This is done in 2008. And you may think that these are quite old, but we, these are very rare to get. But normally, this is very difficult to carry out this kind of research by minority women, by themselves for, for their own situation. And then, and the, these, uh, uh, if you look at that, Buraku group, the, uh, is, this is a community in Osaka, it's Western Japan, there's a big city, Osaka, compared to Osaka city average, they have all lower level of education, except for primary school, but that's not a, a positive thing. And also this gender, uh, the expectation is quite interesting. The parents, will ex uh, only 18% of parents expect daughters to go to college compared to 34%. Yeah. So um, employment as well, if we look at the sectors they work, they, have six, uh, is they work mainly in medical and welfare se sector, but given the education level they have, they are working in essential types of worker, caregivers, and, and uh, not as uh, in the uh, higher level positions in those sectors. Yeah? So if we look at these sectors, as you see in the video, this is the frontline workers, essential workers, they were hit harder by the impact of the COVID uh, infection as well as by the, the whole, uh, in, uh, in the way of the impact of this COVID on the, this kind of sector as well. So, and, and uh, income wise is also, you will see this is, uh, uh, as you see that, that the it's single mothers are one fourth of this uh, sample and they also have uh, the, 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 the income level is low. So uh, this come to conclusion that it was sure that COVID is, uh, if we look at this, uh, Japan could control the COVID-19 remarkably uh, well in, uh, or reduce the infection. But at the same time, the, whether it can reduce the infection is another, uh, another question. It, it can reduce the inequalities, uh, multiple inequalities is so another question. So I would like to end with this. I treat uh, Crenshaw code, treating different things the same can generate much inequality as treating the same thing differently. So um, as we can see that there could be, uh, there are the groups much more vulnerable than other groups. And even in the gender inequality, 
we cannot uh, unify that everyone will have the same impact in as women. So the, the, there are the most vulnerable group exist in this and it's compounded by the different types of inequalities as well. So uh, thank you for, for listening and uh, I'll, I'm going to finish here. Thank you, Tintin, for the great talk. You know, uh, I'm a Japanese and uh, I know for a long time uh, we have a serious problem in Japan. But your talk made it clear uh, we have a much more serious enduring problem. Yeah. Okay. So please uh, pose your questions using QR and to, to with, uh, in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Tintin, also from my side, thank you very much for your um, really enriching um, talk and you were delivering a lot of different um, also numbers that we can, I think, relate to internationally, but then there is like the particular Japanese context, right? So I found that very interesting also in terms of we even, we do have laws and we put them in place and they are introduced in order to promote uh, equality. And still we can find one or the other aspect that actually does the contrary, right? So like, right. Um, and that I found very interesting. So um, may I just start with um, one question from my side um, that I yeah, find sure. really, that I would really love to hear what you think about. We were discussing that yesterday with Michelle Fine and Puleng Segalo, uh, namely what in terms of inequalities for um, identified women, minorities, um, elderly, um, what did the COVID-19 crisis or the COVID-19 actually cause? And what did it rather expose in terms of um, that they have always been there and now they kind of become uncovered and we take a closer look that that's really what kind of um, yeah what I'm asking myself so what what is caused by the COVID and what is more like um, yeah exposed I think the the, uh, the immediate impact on these groups is in terms of, of jobs so the jobs, uh, the ex uh, and also accessibility to healthcare is is uh, I think the, the immediate uh, impact on them because usually if you are single mother, if you are elderly single person living, it's very difficult for you to have a proper healthcare access. So and even uh, there's a subsidiary and support from the government, but still the that to, to uh, uh, be sick is not desirable because that means you lost job. And in that case, you're already losing jobs because these women are working in, a, uh, in the shops, restaurants, supermarkets. These are reducing numbers of workers yeah? and also cleaning stuff, all these uh, things. So these, uh, in the normal time, you even if you have jobs, your income is so low, you're trying to survive day to day. And, and then with this losing of the jobs and also uh, being sick or having higher risk is, is, uh, uh, is making them very difficult for, for to, uh, I mean, that's, that's where you can see the inequality the, compared to women, women who have a much uh, higher income family and also access to healthcare is, is very different because they already have underlying conditions also. So, so in, in terms of uh, physical health and in terms of also psychologically, they have experienced depression because a lot of them also experienced there's a domestic violence is highlighted now, but it's been there all the time. You know? But now it's with the, the social distancing and, and lockdown make it harder for, for these women to, uh, it, it can be now seen that this become a, a really big problem. So these underlying, the, the, the problems they already existed also is much more, uh, making them uh, much more 
us for us to become more aware of it. I think uh, that's as far as I can. I also remember in the beginning of the international uh, lockdown mm -hmm. measures, um, mm -hmm. while privileged people were discussing whether it's uh, ethically okay to stockpile or mm -hmm. not, at the mm -hmm. same time, like there was some discussion of there is huge um, number of people who cannot even afford like some mm -hmm. stockpiling because as you mentioned, living uh, on a on a on a day to day basis in terms mm -hmm. of buying food and um, providing for um, their families, mm -hmm. absolutely. So another question, like this is the, the paid work sector, but you were also mentioning care work, and mm -hmm. I was asking myself um, with this stay home, stay safe, and mm -hmm. the lockdowns. Do you think that the unpaid care work that is a very gendered um, sphere of work, um, does that become more visible um, that this work is actually done or even less visible? So uh, do you have a feel for that? Is that like a chance to discuss that there is like the care uh, sphere, the invisible work, the unpaid work that is mostly done by women? And what is interesting is I asked my students to read uh, about an article that mentioned about un unpaid care work, uh, unpaid work for women increase, especially childcare and household chores plus uh, work. So, and that is uh, students were really surprised that there's such thing as unpaid work. <laughs> These are Japanese students. So, I, yeah, I, I was also, in a way, it becomes, uh, if you expose these issues to, uh, in, in my experience, to the students, it becomes more visible, but I don't think people in turn think like that. Yeah? So social critics and researchers may think more about that, but what women in general, my feel is much more stress. Is uh, whether they can voice this stress or not is is another thing. And uh, uh, for me also, I had a lot of stress by the, these things. But in at home, we try to to do separating, uh, divide uh, the, the these responsibilities. But still. Is it's very stressing for for me, stressful for me, especially when there's a lot of demands from work and all these things. But but I think it's it's a uh, in a way uh, it becomes uh, vis visible or it could now talk about because uh, there are. Uh, a lot of media articles about this is also published, uh, but, but also there, there is also, we have to make a point in education, in research as well. This is important uh, points, yes. Uh, uh, and because that can increase inequality uh, or status quo the same way. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have, uh... Related questions from uh, Kailash. Uh, do you think that post Corona there will be increase in gender gap? Yes. Uh, you, yeah. Mm. yeah I think definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in what way the gap will be widened? Because of the because structural issue. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, because of the uh, structural uh, conditions of Japanese society will be uh, strengthen the gap. Yeah, the structure, the already existing inequal structures is one form, but is also one factor that contributes to gender inequality or widening gender gap. But another thing is how the economic impact uh, of the on the different sectors, like I mentioned, in the that uh, will impact on the the the, uh, the employment uh, situation between men and women, and women are now. If we look at the, the numbers in the data, that they are employed in very insecure, low pay jobs, disposable positions. So these will be cut out. Yeah? It's already being cut off uh, for. For a lot of uh, a lot for a lot of women and lot a lot of men as well, 
but uh, th this uh, this is this will be harder for women because competition also become higher for even in the lower level positions. Yeah? So it, it, the gender gap will be much uh, wider uh, in that sense. Another question from the audience, um, Nicholas Kimmer is asking, thank you very much for your thorough insights into multiple social inequalities in the Japanese context. May I ask how these inequalities are being publicly discussed in Japan? Is there visible protest or other forms of resistance from women and or other marginalized groups? Um, gender inequality is uh, as a women as uh, as a, a group or big group is is much discussed in academically and uh, publicly as well, but. Uh, those focusing on single mothers or elderly or ethnic groups, women are uh, single mothers are, are, are kind of much getting much attention lately, but ethnic minority no. So, so women in the ethnic minority groups and will be uh, having a harder time to get attention, uh, given the the uh, history of Japan, and also. It's not part of the mainstream research as well. So, and it's not part of the mainstream public consciousness as well. So, uh, the the this is where it's very important to be, become part of the mainstream pub, public debate as well as the uh, mainstream research. Mm. Uh, how about the uh, 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 foreign workers in Japan? I guess foreign workers, uh, maybe mm -hmm. they are in a very weak position. Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. Yes, uh, there's uh, um, only media articles around that recently, but I hope it will have more data later. Yes, they experience a, a lot of inequality. If you look at that, that's also partly is a structural discrimination or institutional discriminations against migrant workers. Yeah. So it's existing in Japan and that also contribute to that. So these are uh, foreign workers were also one of the, uh, the most hard hit groups in, in, will be in Japan. Whether there's a gender wise is we still have to see, we see. Yeah. So uh, it's, I, I would like to see more about this research and like to get more information about that. Mm -hmm. I guess I, uh, you have been working on these issues for more, for more than two decades. And uh, mm -hmm. do you think we have a slight hope or to, to make change in this you know, traditional Japanese society? Or how do you think? I think these are uh, uh, always slow progress, but I think there's always someone uh, giving up wise or someone doing that. And so, and part of this is, I, I think, is uh, education because I, I teach. Yeah? So it is, I think, how much education can uh, bring all these awareness, raise awareness is very important because uh, within three, four weeks, so we, we look at these issues and the students' consciousness or awareness change. Yeah? They become aware of, of all these different impact of COVID. So I think that's also, um, if we have a education system that could focus on these issues and, and also showing these, uh, to, to understand the, the, the structure, institutional, societal, social inequalities, that would be very helpful, for, very hopeful for, uh, for the future as well. So you are doing very important research and teaching in, in Japan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I would love to continue the discussion, uh, for example, on Slack. So uh, please yeah, join yeah. us and uh, um, let's discuss uh, gender in in inequalities, and minority inequalities mm -hmm. uh, in Japan and everywhere in the world. I think it's a very, very important topic. So thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you, Tinti. Thank you so much. Thank you, yes, and thank you, Irene. Yes, thank you. Thank you.